Alright, and welcome back for Advanced Controls number two. So I'm opening up a new fresh file, and uh, let's add some characters like we did before. We're going to add a zombie. Alright, and as we learned in the last video, some quick movements. If I just look over here, jump to camera. He is there, and let's move Mr. Steve, jump to camera, there. Alright, so let's say <clears throat> we're going to have a synchronized dance going on with Steve and Mr. Zombie. So let's add a couple, let's add two keyframes. So the first one, let's say our dance move is these arms are going to be going up. Well move them a little out. Alright, now I want to have the exact movement on his left arm as well. And, you know, I can look at the values and I can slowly move them so that I can copy it, but I can also do this. If you right click within the circle, click copy, move to his right arm, hit paste. Let's do the same thing with the Y, copy, and paste, except in this, we're actually going to want to do the opposite, so that one didn't work out as well, but negative 38. Now we've got some mirror movements. So now that we've got one, we can move it over to the zombie as well. So let's copy, select our zombie, paste. Now, I couldn't find a way to maybe copy the whole settings across the board, so it's kind of one by one at this point. But still, it's a lot quicker than turning toggles and, um, oops, just want to copy this, go to him, and we're going to paste, we're going to copy, and then we're going to paste. So now we've got the exact movements that we've got already with our zombies, and let's watch it. Slow it down, so it's going to be a rather quick one. So there are a bunch of cheerleaders. All right. You can also do this, as I showed you in the last one, with the copy and paste as far as position goes. Um, now let's look at scale. Scale, I wish he had this manual input option on the rotation, but it's currently not an option. Um, but as far as scale goes, the simple, oops, I want to reset that, have the whole body. Simple one is just, and we want to have a keyframe. It's just the scale of the whole thing. And if I want to reset that back to there. Now if you unclick the simple one here, you can actually change specific attributes. And let's do an example here with Mr. Zombie in his head. We're going to turn that up all the way, that up all the way, and that up all the way. So now he just has a big head and he's going to run around with a big head. We can do the opposite as well with Mr. Steve where we're going to shrink his head. Now if you do it all the way, it, there's going to be nothing there just because it shrinks it down pretty much to nothing. So when you're doing it the shrink down, you want to keep some of the options there. So now Steve has a small head and he has a big head, and like in the last one, you can copy the options and paste them to another character. And if you unclick the simple one, it doesn't change them. It keeps the settings that you already had. Now, if you're just trying to make it big all the way around, you don't need to change the simple settings. You can actually just select your body part and go like this. But let's say I, I do want to keep the Z scale down so that he's kind of a pizza box head, then you're going to want to keep the simple one off, and now it's going to show multiple values, so I can't actually change it anymore here. Unless it resets them all to the same thing. Now, overlay is picking a specific color. So let's, uh, the alpha, and we've got Steve selected. So let's say by this block we want this color. He's going to be a blue zombie head. And we're going to give it 
about an alpha of that. So now if we play it, his head is going to grow as well. So and you can tell it's kind of not necessarily buggy. I was actually reading on his forum post the other day about this. Um, that it goes by values, so since it has to go from this value to this value, it actually counts up in a linear fashion instead of just going straight to this. So it's counting through all the colors to get to blue on the color scale. So that's why it's a little bit silly looking, but it does get there. And you can see at the same time, Steve's head is shrinking. Yay! Can't really see his arms because his head is so big. Um, alpha is your regular going invisible, going visible, so let's actually make his head go invisible by the time it hits that keyframe as it's shrinking. And it's gone. So that's your alpha, your overlay is your colors, your scale, you can click simple or unsimple and change specific attributes of body parts or your whole body. Um, and like before, so we want to have our right arm and left arm be the same, we can change those and then you can copy the settings and paste them to the other side. Um, let's look at position. We have our copy and paste position. You have the jump to camera position. Toggle snapping is purely just as far as the numbers go on there. Um, you can copy and paste your values in the rotation wheels and paste to other people's. And the transition will judge how it's getting from point one to B. You have the instant, so it just instantly moves instead of moving across the plane to get there. Ease in, ease out, it's a little bit of a fashion up or down, or you can add both, or linear is just the straight line to the, um, to the object. All right, um, as far as up here goes, let's look at these settings up here in the top. Now you'll notice, if I click on the, f oh, I changed his arm settings there. Um, let's actually watch that, it's gonna be kind of funny. And his arm comes back. Um, let's mess with Mr. Zombie here. And if I click him visible right here, that means in this dark shaded area, he's not going to be visible. However, once I make it to the next keyframe, he will be visible. And it it works the same way the instant does, as it's not going, if you want him to fade in like that, you're gonna to want to use the alpha setting. But as far as just, you know, this character doesn't show up in the, in the animation until um, one second in, but I still want him to be on here, and I don't want him to be moving around because if I, if I take visible off, actually turn visible back on, he's going to be there. But say I don't want him to show up until right here. Then I can turn him visible off from here to here, and then he will just show up. And as I was saying before, if you want him to manually fade in like I did on my torch animation where the creepers slowly appear behind, you're going to want to do the alpha. Um, so let's actually add a couple keyframes. And here we can set him to visible off again. So he's not here. He's here. And then he disappears. And you can tell visible and non-visible by the different shades of gray in your timeline. All right. Well, those are my advanced settings, the ones that I've figured out so far. Um, your undo, redo, don't use those just yet as he has... Um, stated they're not quite working yet. If you click this bubble here, you're no longer going to get the help um, window showing up there. If I leave it on, now when I'm mousing over things, it's telling me what they are. And then if you click visit website, it's going to take you to the download website. Um, also this week, I'm going to come up with a render video. I know some people have been asking about that, if I'm rendering it and I'm not seeing it, or it's just black. So I will go over how to render and the different options there. So, oh, actually one more I want to show you guys. Um, down here in the bottom left, you can see there's a magnifying glass and it says 100% next to it. If I'm making like a 30 minute animation here, it's going to take a long time to move back and forth and between my keyframes because this is going by milliseconds. But what I can actually do is take the zoom out to 25 and now I can actually see, let's see, this is one minute long up to here. 
um, 10 percent we can see a total of two and a half minutes on the timeline so that's just a quick thing if you are doing long animations and you're tired of scrolling back and forth or it's just easier for you to see in this bigger mode because you're going to have some bigger movements um, you can change this between 100% and 10% of how much you're actually going to see on the timeline. So, enough blabbing for now. That um, This is part two of advanced controls of your Minimator animations, and hope this is helping you guys out. As always, rate, subscribe, thumbs up, and leave any questions in the comments, maybe uh, struggles you're having with it, and uh, if it's something I know how to do, I will more than happily help you out. So, thanks.